So good morning ladies and gentlemen and thank you for joining me on this first ride review. As always if you're new to my channel and you're not subscribed I would really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and clicking the alarm bell notification just so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Look what we have in front of us this is the Honda GL1800B Goldwing and I think actually this is the biggest bike I've ridden in my biking career so there she is. I don't mind admitting that I actually think this is quite a nice looking bike. Didn't think I'd like it as much as I do, but there you go. So this has got the DCT gearbox, it's got a flat six engine, six piston calipers up front, three piston caliper at the rear, 200 section rear wheel. What a bike, what a machine. Right, let's jump on it and see how she rides. Sounds rather impressive. Right, so DCT gearbox, same old story, press D to get it going. Uh. <laughs> now we're a bit too wide to filter on this one. <laughs> the rear brake is a bit squeaky, a bit on the squeaky side. And it's got the auto stop start system, which was a bit disconcerting when I first uh, experienced the bike turn itself off, but as soon as you touch the throttle, it purrs back into life. All right, so what's this bike like then? So let's talk about the engine first of all. So it's got a flat six with a capacity of 1,833 cc. It makes 125 horsepower. And it makes 170 newton meters of torque, which is just insane. That's more than the Super Duke by 30 newton meters. So even though she's a big old girl, she has got the power. Unlike this little car at the front here, oh, red light. Weight wise, it's 365 kilos curb weight that is. So that's got a bit of fuel in it. Um, so it's not the lightest of machines, of course. But <laughs> I mean that's just in touring mode. When you put this thing in sport mode, it absolutely takes off. It's ridiculous. But it being a big, big comfortable tourer, that's exactly what it's designed to do. Now I picked this up from uh, Honda UK in Northamptonshire. I can absolutely say with conviction that this is the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden. So seating position is kind of mid position actually, but you're sat bolt upright. The bars are quite wide, but it's quite a commanding road riding position and I quite like it in fact. This one's the DCT version, so it has a seven speed DCT gearbox. But that gearbox is so smooth. And that engine of course, massive flat six has a lovely rumble to it really sort of low bassy rumble it has four riding modes you've got rain you've got tour you've got economy and then you've got sport as well which is just mental <laughs> suspension wise then as you can imagine it's it's pretty comfortable but actually it's firmer than you'd think so we've got double wishbone suspension up front, which is those strange things going up and down, which you can see. I mean, it's comfortable, but it is firmer than I would have thought. But I don't think that's a bad thing, because it means it handles quite nicely. It is a lot sportier than you'd imagine in terms of pure handling ability. So when I picked this up, I actually had to ride in rain mode because it was absolutely tipping down for pretty much the entire journey. And in raid mode, it's so lovely and smooth. You know, there are no moments. And the engine will cut off in a second. There it is. Yeah, the auto stop start thing is a bit, a bit weird if you're not used to it. Certainly I'm not used to it on a bike. Fuel tank is 21, I think it's 21.6 litres. So enough to get you around and about for a few hundred miles, depending on how you ride, of course. You've got this massive control centre up front. Dual analog clocks, which threw me a bit because I was like, well, where's the speed? 
but the speed is actually that one. So going back in time a little bit, it's amazing how, uh, how many bikes these days just have the uh, digital speedo. It's amazing how quickly you get used to that. And going back to an analog was quite alien. But it is a lovely bike to ride. It's so relaxing until you put it in sport mode and then <laughs> it's just bonkers. But it, it almost feels more bonkers because you know it shouldn't be able to do what it's doing. So it's quite fun. Uh, it handles really, really well even on these sort of tighter roads. It's so agile considering how big it is. And it just does this sort of thing so well. I mean, I'd love to just ride across Europe over the Pyrenees or something like this. It would be so lovely. Just enjoying the views, the comfort. You've got heated grips as standard. No heated seat though, which is a bit Bit of an odd choice considering the touring focus of this bike, but there you go. It's got panniers built in. And the other version, the non-B version, has a, a massive trunk basically, for want of a better word. It's a top box, but it's so big. It really is more like a trunk. Taking a passenger on this would be, of course, a breeze. And I doubt you'd even feel them on the back. All right, we're going to go down here. Switch gear is quite nice. It's a little bit busy, but nowhere near as busy as the Africa Twin. <laughs> yeah, bloody impressive. Such a big bike. Watching <laughs> enough move. Do you have to be careful with the wet roads around here? So the screen is electronic, you've got a button here. If you want to lower that, have a bit more of a windy experience. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but I don't know. But that's just really windy, of course. But with the screen fully up, it's lovely. Oh, the brakes are really good. <laughs> so you've got dual six pot brakes. So I was talking about massive lines of mud in the middle of the road. You've got this uh, seven inch TFT up front and you can connect your phone up. Let's just check these brakes. Oh yeah, <laughs> and there's hardly any break. There's hardly any diving. I think that's because of the double wishbone suspension. But yeah, you got the um, seven-inch TFT here with this control centre, which you can't use when you're going, which is sensible. It's got built-in satellite navigation. You can connect your phone up via Bluetooth and control stuff like text messages, phone, phone calls, that kind of jazz. You've got a radio if you want to listen to some tunes. All right, we're still in tour mode, but yeah, here's the modes. You've got sport, economy, rain, and tour. Tour is kind of like your normal road mode for this bike. And it uh, delivers enough power, nice and smooth as well. What does she handle like at low speed? I guess you can feel the weight a bit at low speed, is the only thing. You do have a creep mode. If I show you what that means, so you go into neutral hold the front brake and then you've got this little button down here now you've got reverse so if I press the minus button that's reverse and then you've got the plus button just around there that's creeping forwards so it just allows you to kind of fine-tune your parking or whatever well, here's all the bits and pieces you got your sat nav there all built in it's pretty cool so there she is Honda Geo 1800B Goldwing yeah, I really like the look of these lights. I think they're pretty cool. You've got the built-in indicators to the uh, the mirrors there. You've got panniers here, you just press this little button. You've got a bit of storage there. It's not massive and it's a bit of a strange shape, but better than nothing. Another one this side. There we go. Lovely big seat for the pillion as well. This is your parking brake. Stick that on so you went roll backwards. You've got this little... Uh, doohickey here which stops buffeting which is pretty cool volume controls phone controls the horn is like a truck horn it's really loud I won't do that here and terrify everybody speakers there's your uh, double wishbone suspension 
which is, as you can see, it's just, it's a bit strange how that works. Magic dual exit exhaust there. And you see the 200 rear section wheel. It's getting rather busy. Ugh. So seat height is 745 millimeters, but because it's so wide, I can't quite flat foot it. I can almost flat foot it, but not quite. But yeah, my legs are truly mid position, right angle to my knee. So no pain on longer journeys. And off we go. Still in tour mode. We'll check sport mode out in a bit when we get out of the uh, busier area. I love that rumble though from that engine. It's really nice. Rumbly rumble. Another really good thing about this bike is the, um, the weather protection. So I rode this, like I said, I rode this for about two and a half hours in the pouring rain, but I barely got wet. It was just the top of my lid that got wet really. My upper body, my legs didn't get wet. Yes, very, very good weather protection on this bike. Now I would love to get this bike for a much longer term basis so I could do like a really big tour on it. All right, let's go into sport mode. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> See, instantly that throttle response is so snappy. Whew. Gonna have to be careful because it's actually quite, oh my God. I think it might be slightly too much if I'm honest. Oh my god. Whoa. It's just got so much torque. I find it actually the throttle a bit too snappy. A little bit twitchy. Just the way it delivers that power. Oh it's raining as well. Let's uh let's uh let's try rain mode. Ah, there we go. A much more relaxed affair. <laughs> That's better. It's almost like all the other modes were done by the people that know what this bike's about. And then when they were out off to lunch, the Honda racing guys came in and went, right, let's sneak, let's sneak sport mode in. <laughs> While they're not looking. <laughs> it's just bonkers. So uh, overall throttle response, generally speaking, it's silky smooth, just like the Africa Twin DCT. It's lovely. I really, love how smooth these DCT boxes are. This is the second one now I've tried. It was one of those things when I first was offered a DCT bike and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't really want one. I like manual gearboxes. You know, I've been riding 20 something years and I don't really want to start changing that now. But honestly, if you get the opportunity, do try one because they're fantastic. But as I was saying earlier, this bike will surprise you I really have shed a load of weight from this bike and just made it more of a rider's machine. It's fantastic to ride, it really is. So uh, I'm hoping perhaps next year I can speak to Honda UK and speak to them really nicely and see if they'll let me take this on a bit of a trip, perhaps up to Scotland, because I've never been to Scotland and that's, that's shocking, I know. I was, I was telling Teapot One the other day on the podcast, I've never been to Scotland and I am a little bit embarrassed by that fact. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Bit of, bit of a slower pace video than usual, but it's nice to do that sometimes, just to chill out and have a bit more of a relaxing ride. So if you do go out today, do remember to take care, but do remember to also have fun. And I'll see you on the next video. Oh, I've got a nod from a uh, pan-European there. Pan-Euro bros. See you on the next video, guys. Take it easy and Peace.